good afternoon. We are joined by a panel of distinguished speakers this afternoon to discuss the book, Method in the Madness, Insights from the Career of an Insider Outsider Insider, by authored by Sri Parmeshwaran Iyer. This discussion is going to be chaired by Sri N.N. Bohraji, President, India International Center. Just a few lines about Sri Bohra, though he needs no introduction. Shri Bhura is a retired 1959 batch Indian Administrative Service Officer of Punjab Kader, who was 12th Governor of State of Jammu and Kashmir. Shri Bhura Ji has served, also served as Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister of India, Home Secretary of India, Defence Secretary of India, and Defence Production Secretary of India. From February 2003 until he became the governor of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, Sri Boraji had been the government of India's interlocutor in Jammu and Kashmir. He was awarded India's second highest civilian honor, the Padma Vibhushan, for his contribution to the field of civil services in 2007. With these words, I welcome you, sir, and over to you, sir, for taking the discussion forward. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy indeed to be associated with this afternoon's discussion, particularly because the author, uh, Mr. Ayer, and I have been together when he was a very young man. He came to the Ministry of Defense when I was working there. He left very soon. He didn't stay very long. And in fact, uh, he's written about this period of his career in the book uh, very briefly. I wish he had spent a few more pages because that was a very telling period in the, in the life of our country and particularly in affairs relating to the management of the military. However, perhaps in another book he will write more extensively about that period. Uh, he will be talking about this book himself. Then we have a very eminent group of panelists who are here today this afternoon. They will be talking to us one by one and uh, reflecting not only on what is written in the book, but on other issues which emanate from what he has written. Uh, I would first of all call upon Naresh Saxena, one of our good colleagues who has uh, spent long years in the training uh, arena, training young civil servants, as director of the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, and worked in the uh, social development sector for long years, exactly large in related areas, rural development, which is a very, very crucial uh, segment of our governance. Uh, Naresh, can I ask you to take the lead? Thank you very much, sir, for this opportunity. Uh, I have known Param for the last 30 years. I recall uh, when I had gone to Nainital to give a talk, he was my court officer and tall and handsome uh, and dark. <laughs> so therefore, I was very envious of him. And throughout his career, he has shown a great deal of leadership qualities. He has uh, inspired everyone. And he has uh, achieved what others could not achieve. Uh, in, uh, actually, uh, and in fact, his last posting in Government of India as Secretary of Sanitation was remarkable. And something which no one could have thought uh, can be achieved, he did that. I uh, would like to compare uh, his period of uh, uh, Secretary of Sanitation with my own period I was also Secretary of Rural Development in charge of sanitation. Whereas during his period, the annual construction of toilets increased from something like 50 lakhs to about 3 crores per annum. During my period, the number of toilets in decreased from 6 lakhs to 4 lakhs uh, per annum. In fact, 3 lakhs per annum just became half. So what did I do wrong? That is something I want to discuss here. I was convinced that if you give a very high subsidy, and at that point of time, 3,000 rupees uh, per toilet was a subsidy, which was quite a lot in the 90s. 
if you give a high subsidy it, uh, construction would be done by uh, contractors and usage will not be done because people have not been convinced they have not been uh, um, their felt needs they don't have the felt need for toilets so what i did was i said reduce the subsidy to zero from 3000 i said make it to zero give money for information extension communication what is called iec uh, to ngos so that they can create felt need now my minister was very unhappy with this with great difficulty i could convince him i said okay we will give subsidy only to the bpl so for bpl it was from 3000 to 500 for the rest 70 percent of population it became zero the state governments did not like my orders and the number came down from three lakhs to uh, from six lakhs to three lakhs i still feel that perhaps my policy of concentrating on creating a felt need was a good one but it was i think 40 50 years ahead of this time because uh, ultimately subsidy kept on increasing from 500 rupees to 12000 rupees and that was one of the factors which led to more construction i would say that during the param's time uh, focus was not only on construction it was also on usage and usage increased Although we did declare ourselves ODF for free, uh, later many NSSO data or NFHS 5 data show that yes, it has increased. Certainly usage has increased from say 40% to 70%. It is still not 100%. In states like Bihar, NFHS 5 data shows it increased only from uh, 25% to 49%. So therefore, there are still problems. I think the problems are also in terms of solid waste management. We are increasing usage, but if we have only uh, single pit latrines, if we have only, uh, or some rich farmers have uh, septic tanks, therefore the, the, the disposal of excreta is not being done in a hygienic manner. It is being shown, it is being thrown somewhere in the village itself. And therefore uh, the, hygienic part or the, uh, the health part of uh, the program is not being fulfilled. So we still have to concentrate on uh, solid waste management. We have to concentrate on sustainability of ODF and we have to ensure that groundwater does not get polluted. Those are the issues on which uh, we need to concentrate. But as I said earlier, Param's uh, leadership uh, and his, his power of coordination with various agencies, right, right from the film stars to NGOs, was remarkable. And that led to a great deal of increase in not only the, the number of toilets constructed, uh, but also in, the, in its usage. I, lastly, I would say that one needs to con a bit compare India with Bangladesh. I think in India, we focus too much attention on uh, above the ground construction. Toilet must look nice and clean. In Bangladesh, I have seen they concentrate only on providing a pit and uh, on a pan and con connected with two pits. Uh, and then you can, if you are on privacy, you can have a bamboo and you can cover yourself. There is hardly any uh, money spent on above the ground, ground construction. Unfortunately, in our case, there are a very large number of single pit latrines which will not be sustainable because after some time they get filled up and then usage may decline so a lot of work is still to be done but i must say param has done remarkable work in sanitation and i hope his successors do uh, uh, follow up and uh, and make the whole program really odf uh, uh, free and open discussion free, and that is what uh, uh, I think we. Uh, uh, also, let me say that as as we have seen in green revolution, as the usage increases from forty to seventy percent, the chances are very high that there would be public pressure, there would be community uh, participation, and that the number will very soon, on its own, keep on increasing to maybe eighty or ninety percent. So, with this, I will stop here. And maybe if there are others uh, shoes on, then I can come back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Naresh, while I agree mostly with what you said,
I think one great uh, advancement that we have achieved in the last few years when Param was heading the ministry and this entire effort is that even the establishment, the creation of the logistical infrastructure for the large number of latrine facilities all over the countryside in towns and so on, that itself by itself is a very, very great achievement because A, it provides readily a facility, B, it demonstrates the need and creates a demand. Even in the rural areas, I found in the villages where this program Swash Bharat had done well, in the nearby villages where it had not done well, when people were moving around, coming and going, then they start raising uh, complaints and demand. So I believe that a great movement has been uh, set into motion and a great uh, outcome has been achieved, which if we sustain it, if we keep up the the educational side, the awareness side, uh, it will, uh, you know, we will truly achieve a 100% uh, uh, sanitation and ODF. And also uh, the people at uh, the villages and towns, uh, I think all of them become conscious of the need of having such facilities, not merely creating a building and looking at it from outside as has happened in the years past. So now I'll move on to, to our next uh, distinguished speaker, Dr. Yasmin Haq. She's the country head uh, in India of the UNICEF. Uh, Dr. Haq, I was working in the health arena about 50 years, 40, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, I had a great deal to do with uh, your organization and the WHO at that time. Uh, we received wonderful professional support guidance from UNICEF and also a great amount of material help. And uh, of course, the situation is vastly different. The number of our population has also enormously increased since then. So please tell us now about what the Param spoke just now about your leadership role in the area of vaccines. That, of course, is another large challenge facing us. But today, let's talk about sanitation. Indeed. Um, so we'll talk about sanitation and, and I'll also like to touch upon how I've discovered the different sides of uh, uh, Mr. Param Iyer uh, through his book. First, I found two commonalities. Um, one is we're both military brats. Uh, and the second is we both uh, thought Alistair McLean is one of the best authors um in in uh, in thriller writers so so many commonalities you discover through through people's writing i picked up param's book um one sunday afternoon and i couldn't put it down um i think the storytelling ability uh, that uh, he's demonstrated in this book is something that i hadn't quite picked up in our more professional uh, interactions and I think um, for me, this is probably one of the, the must reads that I would, uh, I'm definitely sharing this around uh, with my team and with my colleagues um, because of the humility with which uh, he has shared his uh, successes, failures, ambitions with us is, is remarkable. Uh, and it really has shown us the, the way of some good tips for, uh, for young aspirants, uh, people who are building their career, but also for managers, uh, especially when, you, um, Param, you've talked so openly about the, the blunders you've made and how you had um, uh, seniors who gave you the space to make blunders and learn from them and learn fast from them. And this is something I think that we don't give ourselves or our, our teams enough time for. So I would definitely see this as a great proponent of, of many of the management gurus who, who talk about how to guide and lead teams. Uh, for me, your book tells it in a simple, uh, enjoyable, entertaining way too, but also with a very serious note about it. Um, 
you know, you've you've talked about an evolution of a sector, water. You you talked about the beginning of the India Mark II, uh, and now look at uh, look at where it is. Uh, we see how uh, with Swaj Bharat and and with the celebration and the observance of all the achievements that have been made, how many other countries are taking it on, and also showing that there are different models of doing it. But I think the the thing that strikes me the most uh, is the honesty and the humility with which you have approached issues, uh, whether it's um, for Swaj Bharat or throughout uh, the career you have charted in your book, uh, and how you have been open to listening. And I think one thing stood out for me is when you um, when you've said in one place, knowing is not understanding, and I think. Uh, that indeed is something that uh, if we had all senior managers, all senior bureaucrats um, learning from that, uh, we would uh, probably uh, look at much faster results or much more sustainable results in a way uh, because it enrolls people. And I think in your book, through your narrative, you've shown how you have done in your mind that stakeholder analysis where You've talked about how uh, you dealt with the Babri Masjid incident. You talked about how you have enrolled um, the Sarpanjas uh, for the Swaj Bharat campaign, how you have brought women on board and, and, and really taken Swaj Bharat more as a, as a women's movement for, for dignity of women, but also having a whole cadre of uh, Rani mysteries. And I think this uh, element of giving dignity to sanitation work, it, it definitely puts a totally different color to a, 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 an issue that we continue to face related to uh, the achuts or the, the, the caste system. But you, you managed through that work to demystify it yourself, doing it yourself, rolling up your sleeves and getting into that pit and cleaning it out, but also giving dignity to and recognition to the huge work that these men and women um, are doing. Um, I think um, one part that you talk about that in your team, you needed a team of believers and finding those believers and then garnering their support and providing them with a platform. Um, that in, is also, I think, a great um, opportunity for us to learn from. Uh, that how if we are to go on mission mode, which many times we do have to, uh, the present COVID response and, and vaccination rollout uh, being a lot of the same, but you know, the Jan Andalon that go that went with Swaj Bharat is something that is being aspired in in a lot of other programs that are looking at making lasting results for for people in India. Um, you described yourself as a as a traveling salesman, and I think that is what has made you, um, helped you sell a lot of the not just um, the programs, but uh, that has mobilized people into action. I think the amount that I've seen you travel around, it's also reflected in in your book, and and you have not hesitated whether it's going to meet a, a village sarpanch or the chief minister of a state. Um, you have been out there wherever it has been needed to put in a word, to push, to nudge, to cajole, uh, you've been there. And that is what has really made, uh, made a difference. Um, I think Val uh, said uh, in, in your book that uh, you managed to make sanitation sexy. And, and that's another good thing. You know, turning shit into something sexy is really um, how we are able to make a big switch and a big change. So I'll stop there, but I'll end by saying I really want to meet Ervaz Marshall Ayer because the way you have described him and his influence, um, I think a lot of credit to him and to your mother and to Indira and, and your children. But they seem to have been really constants in, in, in pushing you and nudging you along the way. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, uh, Dr. Huck, with your observations about uh, what kind of person succeeds in uh, working in a large countryside where you have illiteracy, where you have poverty, 
with your ignorance and uh, prejudices. Mm -hmm. I think the, the some of these uh, the moral of the story comes out from what uh, Paravaya did in, for long years in India. Um, that is getting involved with the work in a manner in which you are not seen as a as external agent. Absolutely. You are a separate agent in the local community. I think that goes a long way in uh, achieving results. And now I call upon our friend uh, Mr. Harry Mohan. He is the uh, country head of the Bill Gates Foundation. Uh, I have had the pleasure of hearing him earlier also. Mr. Harry Mohan. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, pleasure to be part of this uh, group. Uh, sir, I think the last time we met was also uh, to discuss Param's previous book. And that was, of course, in the pre-COVID day. So it was at India International Center. Uh, in fact, he, I think... has a, he, has a, he has a contract with me. That is so <laughs> yes, I think he can write about his defense story in the next one. Uh, so uh, I, I think, uh, firstly, I think it's great that uh, Param chose to, uh, you know, capture, uh, of course, his life story, but specifically the years leading the Swaj Bharat mission. Uh, because uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I have less experience than uh, certainly uh, uh, Mr. Ura and Mr. Saxena, but for people of uh, my vintage, I think the sense of possibility that the progress in Swachh Bharat has created is something, uh, you know, truly remarkable. Uh, I still recall, you know, the, uh, the shock when, you know, the... Uh, the Prime Minister of India in his uh, rip, uh, 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 Independence Day speech, sorry, uh, you know, proclaimed uh, the start of the Swaj Bharat uh, mission and the commitment to sanitation. You know, just hearing the leader of the country talking about an issue that most people prefer to ignore was wonderful. But very soon, that sense of uh, wow, sanitation is on the roadmap gave way to, uh, but you know, how is anything going to move? Because, you know, we had all gotten so used to failures in sanitation and Mr. Saxena mentioned even during his stint. But this notion of, you know, announcing schemes, uh, you know, running through their implementation, money getting expended and then progress either stagnating or declining, that was the story of sanitation. And uh, at that point, there was even a sense of disbelief within the government on how is anything going to move. Uh, and because... Uh, we had been working on sanitation not for as many years as UNICEF, but we had been working on sanitation for a few years previously. We had also had a taste of, you know, some of the government's own cynicism about sanitation. I still recall, uh, you know, uh, uh, a meeting getting cancelled when we told the government that we wanted to discuss san sanitation. This was urban. I mean, it was not a topic people wanted to engage. And I'd say, uh, you know, for the first year and a half, uh, or so of Swachh Bharat, we also didn't see a whole lot changing. When uh, our co-chairs, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, visited India in uh, September of 2014 and uh, met with the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, one of the areas he did uh, uh, suggest we focus on was sanitation. And at that point, Mr. Gates mentioned that the foundation's focus is really on urban sanitation and we don't do anything in rural. Uh, so... Uh, the Prime Minister said, uh, you need to make an exception for India because our problem is really in the rural areas and uh, focus on the areas that you feel uh, comfortable. And uh, Mr. Gates and Mrs. Gates said, uh, yeah, the behavior change aspect is something that uh, we think is important and interesting. And we did try to engage. Uh, but that soon frittered into nothingness. And uh, I remember uh, towards late 2015, early 2016, we were struggling to get any traction with uh, the the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation on some of the efforts. We wanted to drive. Uh, and so when Param came in, uh, it was really our uh, pretty much uh, last hope as well. I mean, we were on the verge of uh, uh, ending our rural uh, sanitation engagement. And uh, uh, I recall getting a mail from Param, which itself felt different, you know, uh, 
the the lead of a national mission reaching out to engage with partner and uh, we said okay let's go meet him you know uh, what's the downside and we had of course heard very glowing reviews from people who knew param at the world bank and uh, i think what started then uh, this would have been uh, early 2016 uh is is really a phenomenal uh, i'd say the best partnership that we've had with uh, government in all the years that we've had working in india uh this uh, notion of being treated as an integral part of the mission uh and being given very clear guidance on the areas to contribute and what the government would uh, bring to the table because uh clearly in development sector work in india today the government is uh, you know in the driver seat in terms of you know policy uh, resources decision making and for partners like us the best way to contribute is, is if there is a clear sense of you know uh, uh, what areas the government sees us uh, uh, you know playing a role and where the government plays the role of the overall uh, you know uh, program manager so to speak you know bringing different kinds of partners together and uh, creating the sense of alignment to drive forward the mission uh, so i among many uh, achievements that param has done i think uh, one is you know being just that superb program manager of the entire sanitation ecosystem you know bringing in different development organizations like ours you know bringing in private sector partners corporate foundations and then most critically you know reaching out to uh, the community and creating within them that sense of this is your mission so this jan andolan while, while that's now become a catch phrase in government i think in letter and spirit really came to life during uh, swachh bharat and uh, you know during uh, param's tenure and it's great to see that's now being adopted uh, and adapted to different sectors because uh, the government seems to have uh, internalized the importance of focusing on the demand side otherwise a lot of programs uh, you know uh, focus on supply side you know creating the infrastructure and then you know uh, things don't often turn out to plan so uh, i mean i could go on and on and i think yasmin has done a far better job of uh, you know uh, recapping from the book all the different kinds of uh, uh you know anecdotes the wisdom that uh, param has i mean i think each one of his subject titles could be you know an aphorism a day i mean i think something something to inspire you so i think uh, param there is a management coach you know uh, inspirational leader waiting there i mean next time you don't need a shiv khera you know we'll probably hire you to come and uh, you know inspire drive teams who you know have uh, chosen to dare the impossible and uh, now are wondering about how to implement and execute and uh, i think a lot of the principles that went into uh, swachh bharat uh, remain super critical uh, in in the time of covid uh, and uh, i think what will be critical is making sure that those lessons are carried forward uh, the vaccination drive is one where you know focusing on the demand side uh, helping overcome some of the concerns or questions people might have in their minds is going to be super important and i think many of the strategies that were uh, uh, utilized during swachh bharat uh, remain critical uh, param also played a, a very important role during the uh, the covid planning uh, and that was another area where it was a privilege for us to contribute one of the i mean the empowered group that uh, uh, he led on uh, supply chain logistics getting all of uh, that into motion ensuring uh, supply of food essentials uh, you know that also uh, i think speaks to his capability as a manager as a leader uh, i know he's done the insider outsider inside a bit and he's back to being an outsider now but uh, i think his uh, his experiences his maturity his perspectives uh, are something that uh, a lot of us in india continue to draw on and i hope this world bank role uh, gives him an opportunity to keep connecting and providing um, you know uh, wisdom humor guidance to uh, the many more important and ambitious missions that we have ahead of india as we look at india you know 2022 
India 2025 and uh, you know really making this transition into a, a, a middle-income country and a, a global power. I think solving the sanitation problem, getting the 70% to 100% still remains. And I think those of us who are continuing to work on that are committed. Uh, but uh, really, none of this would have been possible uh, without Param. And now, when one thinks of difficult, challenging goals being laid out by government, uh, there is that sense of possibility, which you know, in August of 2014 didn't exist, but I think the success and the progress of Swachh Bharat has really created a sense of what we as a country can do on even the most intractable uh, of issues. And uh, it's really for creating that sense of possibility that I'm most grateful to Param. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Manasar. Many a true words said. Uh, our next speaker is my old friend, Raj Jangapa. We worked together in the old days. He was the editor-in-chief of one of the newspapers, which is uh, eminent in North India, the Tribune. And uh, I have been generally in touch with him since he left us, but he's far are too engrossed with the affairs of the world to spare too much time for people like me who are super innovated. Uh, Raj, you will like to speak on, on uh, some of the things that uh, has done. One thing which I have not been able to understand, and we'll talk about it a little later, is why did he leave at this juncture? Well, I'll comment on that later. Raj, first you speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mora, and uh, glad you remembered uh, the stint with Tribune. Uh, it's something I remember with uh, great uh, respect and privilege to have worked with you. And I do remember uh, you taught me a lot. Uh, but that's for another day and another discussion. Uh, but uh, today we're talking of Param, who's also an old friend, in the sense five years old. <laughs> but uh, he writes a little bit of uh, about me in his book. And somewhat, I thought... Uh, uh, a little upset that I spent a lot of time with him uh, in the beginning, listened to what he had to say, uh, but finally uh, didn't write too much, except uh, when it really mattered. Uh, I think uh, reading Param's book, having spoken to him so often during these five years, uh, he, he's got a very breezy style. Um, he writes uh, the way he speaks, let's put it that way. Uh, and it's laced uh, as my former, I mean, my other panelists have spoken of with a lot of humor. Uh, there are a lot of uh, um, aphorisms that we could use in our daily lives. Uh, for me, actually, uh, while interviewing Param earlier, as well as uh, reading his book, uh, reminded me so much of uh, the space mission, our Indian space mission, because I have covered that extensively. And uh, very early, uh, Dr. Dhawan had introduced what was called the mission mode. And one of the reasons for ISRO's success is the mission mode that he introduced, uh, which essentially to sum up was uh, he would uh, create a mission, whether it was building uh, a rocket launcher or a satellite. Uh, he would then empower officials, and Dr. Kalam was one of them, uh, and give them full um, you know, uh, uh, discretion to act in the ma manner that they do. He broke hierarchies. Um, so the project director of a particular organization should cut across even the directors of other major projects and talk to them and get the work done. Uh, they, there was finances given to them so that they could execute it and uh, a very tight deadline fixed. And if you looked at the Swachh Bharat mission that uh, uh, Param primary ha handled, uh, had all these things and Param puts it in his own interesting way uh, where he talks of uh, having a big, hairy, audacious goal, the bug, uh, which was uh, to build 10 million toilets in five years. And uh, the average before Param came on the scene was uh, since independence, uh, we had built around 70 million toilets. So he had to uh, uh, do all this. Sorry, 100 million toilets he had to build, not 10 million. Param will immediately correct me on this one. So uh, he had to build 100 million toilets in five years, and we had taken 70 years to build uh, 70 million toilets. Of course, that figure is a little uh, misleading because in the last uh, two decades, we're building at the rate of uh, half a million toilets uh, uh, a year. But this meant quadrupling. What Param had to do was to quadruple the entire, um, the entire project uh, 
the entire construction of toilets, the way he motivated people and did that. And uh, the second principle that he talks of, I think, was the interesting thing is to get people involved, the Janandolan movement, as he called it. And uh, I think Dr. Huck had sort of mentioned uh, how important it is. Here is a subject that no one likes to deal with. I mean, next to uh, hospitals and death, uh, dealing with shit, as she called it, is one of the most uh, smelly jobs that are there. No one likes to get in and dirty their fingers and see what needs to be done. But Param actually painted that into a movement of, of change in the country. And I think that's the big other big lesson is uh, motivating and creating a behavioral change uh, in people's attitudes. That why is it important to use a toilet? Why is it uh, sort of in terms of your own health and as well as the country's resources? Why is it so important? Uh, why is it one of the most important missions we have since independence? I, I, and then backed with it was the government which he, in his book, describes Mr. Jaitley, who was the, the then finance minister, saying that he gave him a handsome budget. I think that was 1.3 lakh crores. He also had, uh, very, very importantly, a leader who believed in it. And that was the prime minister, who in many senses, were, if Param was the prime driver, he was the prime motivator of the entire thing. And he, he allowed uh, uh, Param to have a free hand in doing it. And I think this is a very good example for bureaucracy uh, we have a lot of skepticism and recently there have been comments of uh, concern, including uh, by the Prime Minister who said, uh, do we allow the Babus to rule um, the country and they're not going to do a good job of it or something to that effect. But if you look at what happened in this case, you, you put a competent person, you give him the powers, you give him the money, you give him the, uh, you know, all the backing that is necessary to, for it and allow him to do it and you see tremendous results. And I think the, the, th the key things he talked about is very much like the space mission was uh, he flattened the hierarchy. I mean, there was, I have walked into his office many times and it was an open door system uh, where all his juniors and seniors would mingle together. And there was no, you know, that uh, uh, thing that you see quite often in bureaucracy, the kind of uh, officiousness and everything else was gone. It was a mission. They were all working together and they used to work till quite late in the night. And I think very early Param also realized that, um, you know, the central government has its limitations. It can provide the funds, it can provide the direction. But at the end of the day, the state government has to do what it has to do because uh, health is a state subject and so is water and so is sanitation. So then motivating, as he called it, the PMCM, uh, the chief minister, district magistrate model became a very critical fulcrum for development in India. How you m motivate the chief minister and the district man magistrate of that particular the the basic unit of development was very critical in terms of him achieving the targets that were there. So in all these respects, he was able to flatten the hierarchy. He was able to hire a young team of uh, thing and uh, also uh, make frequent visits as he used to do. I used to call it from working from eight until late. Uh, you know, he was always there. He was working weekends. He was traveling and uh, whenever I call him, he was in some distant uh, state doing it where he was motivating all the officials to do it. And I think very importantly, uh, the components, two components I would quickly mention that made uh, the mission a success was uh, one, the, uh, the employment of technology in, in it. And uh, given what we have currently, I think this was one of the most effective ways where uh, the, the Prime Minister, particularly Mr. Modi, has introduced this. And now it is spread to all other programs or probably all other programs did at the same time, which was to get feedback through technology. So if you wanted to know how many toilets were built, you were actually getting photographs or videos of that particular place and then logging it into a data sheet so that you knew that there was an actual construction or it was halfway home or whatever it was. So I think that kind of close monitoring was very, very important. And I and uh, the other thing I would mention was his ability uh, to influence both social media, uh, the you know, the entertainment industry where he got people to do a movie on it, uh, as well as, uh, you know, hacks like me who didn't, of course, as he complains, deliver. He had he'd spoken to me on many occasions, but I was... Uh, like him waiting for the right time. And uh, we actually finally put him on the cover and I'm gonna show this uh, cover to you all. I don't know if you can see it very clearly. It's, uh, uh, it's Param in a toilet <laughs> and we call him the unsung hero. He deserved to be on the cover for the kind of work he did. Uh, we call him the Swatch uh, Yogi and truly the way he approached his work was with that kind of uh, karmic dedication to it. Uh, you could see that uh, the passion whenever you met him, the passion which he spoke, I've, I've dealt with a lot of officials and uh, leaders. And uh, here was someone who was committed. 
He had uh, behind in his room uh, a display which showed how many days he had left, what was the targets he was reaching. And uh, it was really something to see uh, for someone like me who had uh, you know, been cynical. I've actually covered water issues right from the time that Rajiv Gandhi introduced the water mission. Uh, even before that, when we had in 1987, the great thirst, uh, and I wrote about that uh, as well. And here it was so refreshing to see the change. Something that we should have done decades ago was now being done in, in, in you know, an absolute hurry. If there were some issues uh, in, um, in terms of uh, what I felt would have added to the book, and maybe that's something that Param could add on, uh, was that uh, he could have, uh, in some senses, uh, you know, talked about the people he changed, um, you know, uh, that would have been very interesting. Who were the people where he went around uh, building these toilets and how they changed their lives over a period of time? As someone else uh, mentioned also, it would be interesting to see and his views now, it's one thing to build toilets and another to have it maintained and, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, uh, so, sorry, there's a call. I'm just going to disconnect that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, it's one thing to sort of build toilets. The other thing is to maintain it. Also, the disposable of waste. Uh, what are the innovative techniques we can do that? Not just in rural India, but in urban India. That's something that uh, that's uh, maybe mission two. Uh, that's very critical. That uh, needs to happen because a lot of, as we know, um, the devil is in the implementation. You do this, but uh, they soon become dysfunctional. How do we continuously maintain that? And finally, I would um, just like to add that there was a very humorous incident that happened uh, with it uh, when uh, we met the prime minister together by accident virtually in, at an official function and i happened to ask uh, param uh, you know i mean i happened to ask the prime minister had he seen the cover story that i had done on param and uh, he said yes uh, <laughs> he said yes and he flushed him down the toilet <laughs> on this uh, because we put him inside that but uh, in many senses param uh, I was waiting for the right moment. I was an outsider uh, to this entire thing. And just at the right moment when you'd achieve what you did, I finally put it on the cover. So no complaints against me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raj. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now we have the author who will speak to us. Uh, Param, before you speak, uh, one thing I would request you to comment on <laughs> What what is the element of madness that you refer to? Because I have not been able to identify. There's a lot of method in your entire career in your work. Where is the madness? I I would be I appreciate it greatly if you educate me on the madness part. It is inside inside and outside. Yes, of course, in a in a in a uh, in a manner of speaking, you could say you are inside or outsider. But I think you remain an insider. And in sanitation, uh, there is no outside really. It's only the inside. And once you get into the inside, you can't get out. And the other thing I'd like to know from you is, uh, by the time you left and returned to your old World Bank job, a great deal had been achieved by the mission and by you personally. Was it that you wanted to go or was it that the government uh, didn't want you any longer? Because I feel, if you didn't meet me before you left, I felt when I learned that you had gone, that it was a great mission to, to keep working on, especially as they added the water, water management to the, the schedule of the ministry. It was a great challenge, frankly, this challenge is as gargantuan, as large, as important as the as the uh, as the challenge we had of producing food grains in our country when we led to the revolution. Now, this is a very big challenge, and it is not half as complete as yet as was Raj and uh, Dr. Hak and other mentioned. Uh, this disposals of system, this solid waste, and so on. Where do we go from there? How do we manage? How do we sustain? There are large issues which we need to, to achieve and that keep going. Population is still increasing. Our poverty is not decreasing. So there are large issues. So here you are now. It's all yours for the next 10 minutes. Thank you very much, sir. First of all, let me thank uh, you, sir. It's a real privilege to be here today as part of this very distinguished panel. 
and uh, you know i just wanted to thank each one of you i've been associated with you with each one of you in 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 a different way uh, you know as you uh, i've known yasmin uh, for a long time during the swachh bharat mission over the last 5 years i'm really glad yasmin that you're also an alisa mclean fan you know grew up uh, reading all those books multiple times and of course uh, so it's it's good to know that we share uh, that's something i didn't know about you as well and uh, what what can i say about dr nc saxena who has been a sort of guru and mentor to me over the last 35 years as you said sir i was your escort officer i remember checking out the flush in the bathroom whether it worked or not in your guest room and fortunately it was working that was part of the job and uh, you have been advising me all through so very privileged to have you here today uh, the chairman of the panel ms anand vora sir it was great working with you learned so much particularly during that very interesting period uh, when we both worked with our mutual boss mr arun singh in the defense ministry and i know raj is also a good friend of mr arun singh so learned so much from you and uh, uh, hari tremendous support from the gates foundation i remember in the beginning as hari said they said they only do urban sanitation and then the phenomenal support we got from them from unicef in in the program because it was a partnership and uh, on the behavior change the social media all the side of demand side aspects phenomenal support and hari is also a, a close friend and of course raj what can i say about raj who is uh, the legendary journalist incredible credibility editor in chief of the tribune and as raj said you know i was a little impatient in the beginning i said hey raj why don't you guys cover this program and he said listen let's let's see how it's going let's get some results and so he calmed me down and then finally he sprung this huge surprise uh you know putting me on the cover talking about the program and as he said kind of flushing me down the toilet which the prime minister humorously noted so it was really good having uh you know people like raj with with the credibility of india today which he pretty much runs he's the editorial director and for uh you know the mood of the nation almost consistently they would find that the swachh bharat mission was one of the top programs in terms of what people really believed you know so it was that was a good reality check so uh very grateful to all of you a little bit about the book so uh, why did i write it you know i've got to thank my wife indira who has been the driving force throughout my career and uh it was her title by the way sir method in the madness she said listen you had a kind of uh, offbeat unusual career you know uh, you've been inside the government you worked in the world bank you took 2 years off uh, to become the road manager and coach for our tennis uh, professional children then you came back to government so it's an unusual story and since you've been keeping a diary which i kept uh, it, you know maybe you should write about it and uh, so then i took my father's example you know he'd been inspiring all of us and many others for years the running air marshal so when he was a young officer in srinagar a uh, pilot officer He used to get up at four o'clock in the morning and learn French through the lingua phone those days, the old gramophone records. So I took that as my example. And when the lockdown started, uh, March twenty fourth, and all travel was shut down, I couldn't be a traveling salesman physically at least. So I I used that early morning, that four thirty to seven thirty uh, period in the morning, which I saved on travel time. And I thought, you know, let me try to hammer out this book. So put in three hours a day for about six months. got a rough draft out by sort of uh, end of august september uh but you know that it was fun writing the book as well so i took that opportunity and then uh, harper collins was kind enough to publish it but in the book itself so i've tried to uh, make it somewhat light reading because one thing i was always worried about i love biographies particularly of civil servants but some of them tend to be a bit heavy and a little bit of you know when i was this i did that and so on so i thought let me write it a little bit in a tongue in cheek style uh, make it more readable and and also come up with some practical pro tips many of whom I've, i've learned from so many of you and i must also acknowledge uh, two seniors who really uh, you know guided me along the way one is mr kamal pande the former cabinet secretary whom i learned a lot from one of my pro tips is from him 
of just get to the point, you know, cut out the fluff. And others, Mr. P.K. Sinha, the, the former cabinet secretary, is now principal advisor to the prime minister. He's the one who really sort of has talked to me about uh, coming back to government, but from so many other seniors. But in the book, again, let me come to Method in the Madness, sir, the title. Uh, so madness is actually a sort of metaphorical reference to the unpredictability and the chaos which all of us go through in our careers. All of us do it, maybe in the civil service a little bit more than others. And, uh, you know, the, the transfers, the, the situations we have to deal with. So uh, some method all of us try to bring into that madness. So that was, again, Indira's suggestion. And my kids, of course, were quite skeptical about the title itself. And, you know, like kids are, they were pretty ruthless in terms of all of them read the book. They said, you can't say this. I remember my, my daughter improving my English in many places. And my son saying, do you really want to say that? You know, it's, 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 you're going to get into trouble. So, uh, you know, it was a kind of team effort. And of course, uh, uh, my family, my sisters and my father and my late mother, you know, they were all sort of, of course, they were always going to be behind it. But in the book, so I divided into three parts. The first 20 years were the early career in the civil service, including my stint in the government of India, where I met Mr. Vora, uh, working with Mr. Arun Singh, you know, being a, a collector in Bijnor. And then, of course, that Swajal project, which really taught me about water and sanitation and how I kind of stumbled into a specialization. That's how I put it in the book, into water and sanitation. And then I was lucky to be... Uh, recruited by the World Bank. Uh, you know, life was very different in Washington, but kind of got a global perspective and got deep into the sector, which I think is really important. But perhaps the most enjoyable stint I've had is being road manager to my daughter, Tara, who went on to play professional tennis. Uh, my son, Venkat, as well. And that was really phenomenal. I always remember a book by Akio Morita, who, wrote, who founded Sony. And when people asked him after he retired, what is the thing you regret the most? And he said, listen, I didn't spend time with my family. I was so busy in my career. So taking those two years off, traveling with my daughter and son, I think was just phenomenal. And I kept a diary. I was going to write a book about it. Of course, it's only a chapter here, but uh, at least I've written about it. And then that phenomenal experience of coming back. And I've written about this in the book where uh, the Honorable Prime Minister made that unbelievable speech, 15th August 2014, from the Red Fort. And I was in Hanoi in Vietnam in the World Bank. My wife and I were watching the broadcast. And I remember 45 minutes into the broadcast, the Prime Minister talks about sanitation, toilets, defecation. Unbelievable. No one had done that ever before, particularly in an Independence Day Red Fort speech. And I remember telling Indira, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I've got to get back and be part of that movement. This is an incredible opportunity. And I was incredibly lucky to get that opportunity about 15 months later. And as Raj said, you know, this program, without that level of political leadership, uh, he was also a communicator in chief, in fact. He never missed an opportunity to talk about the program. He's a charismatic speaker. And all the sort of symbols of Swaj Bharat, whether it's the chashma or the tagline, uh, they all came actually from him. So I learned an incredible amount from the Prime Minister. Uh, you know, how he wanted to make it a Jan Andolan, his ability to communicate. So that was itself a phenomenal experience. I've written about it in a chapter in the book of kind of leveraging the leader uh, in the program. And then, of course, uh, you know, the whole campaign, the PMC and DM, working with young collectors, working with development partners, working with all of you. I think it made a very big difference because we realized early this could not be a Sarkari program. So all the way down to the Swachagrahis, the 600,000 grassroots motivators, uh, you know, just being inspired by them and also encouraging friendly competition among states. The role of communication about behavior change, I think that was very, very important because for us it was not really about those 100 million toilets which were built, which itself was significant, as Raj said, but about changing behavior. And, uh, you know, getting advice from Mr. Dr. N.C. Saxena about the going from a single pit to a twin pit. We got everyone on board. Uh, you know, we were open to ideas. Look, there were a lot of critics. There are still gaps. Sustainability is really important. We set into motion systems for that. 
And Swat Bharat phase two is moving into ODF plus, into a broader, uh, broader version of sanitation, which is looking at solid waste management, liquid waste management as well. And then, of course, there was the water mission. So your question, sir, the water mission with the Prime Minister announced, the Jal Jeevan mission, had been a year in the making. Systems were set up. And uh, so there's a, a very competent officer, Mr. Bharat Lal, who is now leading the Jal Jeevan mission. Uh, an equally competent team uh, led by Arun Baroka is leading Swaj Bharat Phase 2. Uh, we were also very fortunate, I have to say, that the Tata Trust recruited for us 550 young professionals. They were called Zilla Swaj Bharat Preraks. They made a huge difference. So they were the eyes and ears of the collectors. They were also reporting back to us. And so I think the whole idea was how do you make sanitation exciting? As Val Curtis said, you know, after we organized the Mahatma Gandhi International Sanitation Convention, where we got the Secretary General and the Honorable Prime Minister, and he addressed the gathering. Sanitation was made exciting. Uh, also, we got Bollywood superstars. They were all very kind. They did everything pro bono. And I think they motivated the young collectors. And so your question, sir, uh, why did it end? I think the government was extremely kind and supportive and appreciative and would have actually wanted me to continue. But, you know, uh, as I mentioned in the end, you know, we had achieved one milestone. We had set in place system for another. I'd worked four and a half years. And Indira and I decided that it was time to kind of reconnect with the family. So we came back to Washington. Uh, that's all there is to it. I'm missing the action in India a lot, even though I'm working at a global level. And as I mentioned uh, in my postscript, who knows, maybe another fateful call will come again. Let me stop this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Param, for clarifying various things. And now, uh, uh, Dr. Usha, how many questions do we have? Comments and one is reiterating what, sir, you have said that may Mr. Iyer heading the water mission, he should have continued here. But nevertheless, there is a question uh, which is from Jamshedpur. And uh, she says that how could you do with this to the author? How could you do what you did in the area of sanitation during your tenure? Uh, in the sense that what are the those key drivers that drive the ambitious mission of sanitation in the country? And there is a connected question. It says there are still some dots to be connected or gaps to be bridged. Uh, what are your comments or views regarding this? How do we overcome or bridge these gaps? Yes, sir. No, I think it's a very good question, sir. So we saw that they were actually, if you look at it at a kind of uh, macro level and at a policy level, we felt that, and this is something we shared at the international convention, there were four P's which really drove this program. The first P was political leadership. Without that, as Raj uh, very eloquently, eloquently mentioned, I don't think we would have been able to proceed because, and I think Dr. N.C. Saxena mentioned this in, in his book as well, that level of political leadership for a program like this, for a subject like sanitation, without that, and coming right from the prime minister, that was the wind at our back. So that, that's the first factor. The second is public financing. I mean, not many people know but if you look at it in dollar terms, more than $20 billion was committed by the government. This sanitation uh, is, you know, is a public issue. And uh, for sanitation to be addressed, you need to finance it. And it's a public good. The finance minister, the late Mr. Jetley, you know, recognized that, followed by successive finance ministers. And so more than $20 billion, if you look at it in close one point. Three lakh crores were invested by center and state. The third was partnerships, what we've been discussing with, with all of you, with development partners, with NGOs, with grassroots organizations, with sarpanches, and with the media, uh, you know, with all the pros and cons, the positives and the negatives. I think the partnerships were critical. And last, the fourth P is people's participation. How do you get people excited? The Jan Andolan, getting communities committed to making their village open defecation free. So I think those factors were very important. And uh, in terms of gaps, sure, there are gaps. There will always be gaps. It's a dynamic process. And that's why the sustainability part of the program became very, very important. And therefore, the incentives, the mechanisms, the continued communication, uh, 
for people to continue using toilets. And then, uh, you know, taking up opportunities, even uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, a uh, big problem led to a lot of hardships. But one opportunity was hand washing with soap, pushing hygiene promotion. Now everyone's doing it. It's become, it's come into common practice. So I think the gaps need to continue to be addressed. The ministry and all the state governments and the districts are very cognizant of this. And I think that work is going on. And on the drinking water front, another huge announcement by the prime minister that every uh, village in rural India, every household in rural India will get what we call a functioning household tap connection. Again, with partnerships with all of you, with the agencies, uh, the ministry is making a big push with the state governments. So you move from one mission to another, but you never forget you've got to sustain the outcomes of the first. And, you know, it's like that old advertisement, the city never sleeps. There's no rest. You have to keep working at it. It's never mission accomplished. And I think uh, my colleagues in the ministry and all the partners are continuing to focus on that. May I, may I add something here? So, uh, yes, may I add something here? Yeah. You know, one thing unique which Param had done was to do constant monitoring of the program. As you all know, unfortunately, our administration is input based. How much money is being given, how many toilets are being constructed, that is known. But how many are being used, how many are actually being constructed, that is not being monitored. In fact, if you recall, in 2013 or so, when the census figures came out, there is a very big gap between the number reported by state governments and the number of toilets actually constructed. So therefore, there is a tendency in our administration to do inflated reporting. I recall on behalf of UNICEF, I had gone to monitor this program in Maharashtra. And Maharashtra in 2013 was showing about 80% uh, uh, construction toilets constructed. Actual figure was only 35%. So I shouted at the secretary, I said, Vandana, all your data is bogus. He said, sir, don't call it bogus. This is advanced statistics. This is what we will achieve after 20 years. But we are very fond of this program. So we are reporting it right now. So what Param was, uh, did was he set up a committee in which we had UNICEF, we had uh, 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 World Bank, we had UNDP. Everyone there was there, and then we were monitoring the program almost on a continuous basis. So therefore, the tendency to do inflated reporting was very much reduced, although there is some reporting, uh, always inflated reporting, but it was very much controlled. That was a very important uh, initiative which Param took. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, there are now few comments, actually. A few comments. comments uh, well, if they are not very long, extended comments, yes, let us hear the comments. Yes. A speaker should be requested to be, please be brief. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, says uh, congratulations, Mr. Parmeshwaran, for leading. This is uh, uh, Zohra Chatterjee from Lucknow. Uh, for leading the initiative, wonderful that you simultaneously invested in your children as well. So there are other uh, comments are also similar in nature. Uh, congratulate the remarks. <laughs> That's very good. Yes. Um, when we have a little time uh, before we close, uh, I would particularly like to mention, Param, that the work you have done in your career in India, particularly the last phase, is uh, very important. It's very uh, significant it is of a lasting nature it sets an example and i hope that uh, with your current uh, global uh, involvement global responsibility perhaps there may be another opportunity that you will be back as an insider and do more work having said that i address myself to raj at the moment that uh, you know this entire controversy of uh, um, what Babus are capable of doing and not doing. I think here is a wonderful example of uh, one of the Babus uh, doing phenomenal work. Now, I think it's a question, as you mentioned yourself, Raj, that political leadership. The PM has uh, led from the front. 
and then he picked up a man like Paramahaya to execute the mission and then gave him the uh, the freedom to do it. So I think the uh, moral of the story is not so much of uh, which category of human beings were carrying what labels do what, but I think the right person for the right job, right, right leadership with the uh, responsibilities and the authorities which go with that job, uh, go a long way and we have <clears throat> and the, the work to be done in our country, which remains to be done, is so large and so diverse that I think we need uh, several hundred param IAS to do the mission leaders. And where they come from, IAS or police or railways or postal service or engineering or medicine, I think is uh, not a major issue. I think we need to mobilize the right people and uh, give them the task, give them the responsibility, and perhaps not waste so much energy in, in uh, saying who should do what. Um, the work that is done on the ground, um, I'll give you an example. When when Param uh, was doing this work, I was in touch with him, but that was a political rule in the GNK. He and his minister had come and so on, certain things were done. Uh, some good things were done in GNK. But we were at the bottom of the list. Param, you remember that? Yes, sir. In the list, we were the last. Uh, we had not got going. Then it so happened that a certain political uh, development and governor's rule came. And Param again came to, to Kashmir and we had a couple of very good meetings with his staff officers and he himself came. And uh, some of our best officers in JNK, a very good leaders, very missionary people, very ardent, very serious, they went into action. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Param, I think in about eight months' time, JNK had come to number two. Yes, no, absolutely, sir. JNK was right below there, and I think under your leadership and your team, it was a remarkable turnaround. Yeah, we had the lady officer, rural development. No, we had uh, my leadership was frankly <coughs> not a factor, but we had very good officers, and once they got going, I think they achieved remarkable results. So, the, but the, um, among the other things which which uh, comes out of your book, your experiences, your narrative, is that uh, every item of work uh, which relates to national development has to be viewed as a very noble mission, you know, not just a department or a ministry or a, you know organization getting a budget and giving salaries to staff. So if we can somehow or the other convert the, the existing structures into slightly different cultural organizations in terms of objectives, in terms of style of functioning, interrelation with the public at large, and uh, the role of the social media, of course, is very important. Uh, uh, currently, it is, it is uh, of even more importance. So all the things that we need to do in the coming 10, 15 years uh, achieving our national goals, I think uh, it is very much in the realm of possibility, doability, if um, we don't go wrong in what we need to do. Having said that, Baram, once again, um, our great appreciation for the work you've done and um, with the great hope that you will continue doing good work and third hope that you will come back to India and do more work. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, really appreciate it. Just the last word, I wanted to thank Raj and India today for you know giving me the cover of the book. Actually, there was the other option of showing the cover, which Raj had me inside a toilet. But then you know the publishers felt that you know it was a little more sober to put the other cover, so we went with that. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, okay. you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.